All right. Hey, what's up, Maki fans? Uh, and welcome to the third of four installments of our webisode series, this one all about interior design. So we are very fortunate to be joined by Rachel Robinson and Josh Grainer, two senior interior designers um, who help bring you that amazing, beautiful interior of the Mustang Maki. We're going to spend the next couple of minutes talking through the process and everything that went into building you a very customer-centric design. And then um, we're going to spend a little bit of time at the end with Q&A. So please do send uh, questions along the chat feature along the way. We'll answer as many of them as we can in real time. But you know we'll be holding some of those good ones for the end uh, for, for Josh and Rachel to really dive into. As a reminder, we're going to have this up on Ford's YouTube uh, page and uh, recorded in a, couple, in a week after this. Um, and I think we're ready to dive on in. So Rachel, Josh, take it away. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Josh, Go ahead. would you like you got me? Yeah. Hey, guys. Welcome. Uh, thanks for showing up. Uh, super excited to show you guys uh, a little behind the scenes of what it took to bring uh, this car to all of you. And I'm sure you all can't wait to, uh, to get your cars. So uh, let's get in it. So you can see this is us, obviously. Uh, <laughs> this is the design story. So uh, there's kind of two uh, big areas of the design story. One is a human-centric approach, which is us designing the car specifically for all of you and having your lifestyle uh, be part of it. And the second part is making it a Mustang. And that was actually a pretty difficult feat too. So um, we start every program at Ford kind of looking at uh, a core set of values for all the customers that will buy the car. And it's something that we can design around and gives us cues as to what um, values you guys have. And this program, we started off with this archetype. Uh, it's kind of an idealized uh, user. And it was centered about around like positivity, thoughtfulness, openness, um, modernity. And this human design approach wanted us to bring all of that and bring your values into it. And we knew that with all this research about um, making it lightweight, inspirational, um, aspirational, and something kind of timeless, um, that if we delivered on a key, uh, like three key objectives, that we'd have like, an absolute home run for you guys. So as we took all this research and got to know you guys and what's in your minds, um, the three kind of priorities that kept coming up were openness, showcase technology, and warmth. Uh, so you can kind of see here on this sketch uh, on the left um, that this super modern cockpit kept coming up in our sketches and had to do with open floating uh, aspects that um, kind of give the essence of lightness and uh, openness to the interior. We don't want it to feel confining or claustrophobic inside. So we wanted uh, thin floating elements and a lot of open storage because it's still an SUV. You guys have a lot of stuff and we wanted to give you a place um, to throw it. Basically, we called it seamless entry. And we wanted everybody to be able to get in their car, stuff their, their things down, and just go and not worry about uh, stuff rattling around and finding a place for everything. Um, you can see on the sketch on the left, uh, this open area in the middle of the console. Uh, that kept coming up. And we actually called it the chuck it bucket originally. It was a spot where you could just chuck your things and go. So that kept coming up. Uh, the showcase technology, you can see on the sketch on the left, was us prioritizing technology differently than we typically do. So this was about um, making the driver's area, the cockpit, um, more about driver controls and minimal information, minimal distraction, and then making this big center screen, uh, all this technology that's going into uh, tablets and iPads these days, um, getting that to the passenger and driver and making that kind of a focal point. Um, we, you know, I want to show how advanced this car is with this new platform and new battery technology. And then the last thing on the right here, you can see the warmth. We wanted to bring uh, warmth to what would be a pretty stark interior. Uh, when it, the more modern and minimal you make an interior, the more it seems lifeless and um, more like a, a pedestrian product. And we want this to be something that you can cherish and it still has some warmth to it. Something that you can that is akin to your living room or something that you uh, that you know it's lifestyle oriented. So as we took these three key points, uh, we started ideating a lot. So you can see we had a lot of a lot of amazing like sketches and ideas based around how we can showcase the sound system. It's a silent car, so the sound system is super super important, and we wanted to show off uh, basically the sound system we developed with Bang Olufsen. 
So we started working with uh, sound bar ideation and how do we show where the sound is coming from and how do we give you that feeling of your living room? You've got a sound bar and your you know, big screen TV. Uh, so we wanted to give that feeling of your living room to you a bit and showcase how important the sound is. And also you can see a lot of ideas here on um, like lightness and openness. So there's a lot of thin floating elements and that gives you the feeling of space and perception of space. And you can start to see, uh, like on the sketch on the left, we're starting to move things around and reprioritize for lifestyle. So we started to move the speakers and the doors up to give more storage below them. Um, the console still at an open bin. We got the chuck it bucket. We're still developing, uh, that. And as we took these ideas for storage, we wanted to figure out exactly how your lifestyle would impact what's going where. So with this sketch, we started to figure out what are people carrying and how do we accommodate that? So we figured everybody has a phone, everybody's got charging cords, um, you know, you've got your purse. And that's one thing that we really resonated with is that women always say that I'll have a spot for their purse. So we wanted to make sure to give them a, a specific spot for their purse or their clutch, their handbag, uh, and then your fanny pack or whatever you have with you. Um, so this was really, really interesting for us to figure out how we rearranged it. And we started working in the studio with a foam buck. It's basically packing peanuts. It's white foam. And we were working with it in the studio, kind of like uh, you could rearrange it and see how uh, you could orient it to better suit your needs and fit your lifestyle. And it was really interesting to see how everybody else did it. Um, so basically with all these ideas on how you could rearrange the interior, we thought this is a new car. We've got a new platform. Uh, this is a new human centric approach that we're taking. We should do something completely new. And we actually brought a bunch of customers into the design studio and asked them, you know, how, how would you live its interior? If you could rearrange it instead of you accommodating to the car, how could we accommodate the car to you? And it's, a kind of a new approach for us. We always think we know best, you know, okay, we've got a, a spot for your purse. If you look here, we've got a spot for your purse. We've got a spot for your phone, but we really want to see if that's working the way we think it will. So here you can see one of the, the foam bucks that we sent uh, all over the world. Um, and these are some of the objects that we offered people the, the chance to, to put around. So you've got your iPad, you've got an umbrella, you've got different size purses. People had uh, yoga mats. Um, so everybody had different lifestyle objects they brought with them. And we started rearranging the interior to figure out uh, how exactly does your life impact the interior. You can see the sketch in the lower right. There's a big spot for a purse. And then side by side cup holders um, kind of helping organize. So we really wanted to organize your life a little bit, make it a bit more seamless. And this is another shot of the interior. So it's basically, like I said, packing peanuts and foam core. And we had a tray on the door. We had little flip out areas for your phones and where you want to charge it. Do you want to be able to see it? Is it far away? And with all this in mind, we realized we were kind of dead wrong on at least the purse aspect. Uh, women did not like having their Gucci bag on the floor. Uh, they thought it would get dirty. Um, they thought it wasn't really safe being that low and close to the pedals. So, and they, most importantly, they couldn't access their things. And we realized that people's keepsakes, all the little things like your, your phone, your clutch, you want them close to you so you can access them. Even if you're not going to be accessing them, you'd like to know that you can. So this sketch started to reprioritize where things are going in the interior. Um, you can see we've got the sound bar that we're working with here. We're starting to add different fabrics to it to bring some warmth to the interior. Uh, we started playing with different ways to make this uh, center screen really a priority, uh, kind of a centerpiece in the interior. And you can see we started working with the flip up floating armrest. It gave us a chance to put a purse or a camera bag or whatever you have with you right there. And that's kind of your spot where you have um, your personal space, a uh, really dedicated area. And then you can stash other belongings that you don't access as often in the door and in the front of the console. So we started to evolve this and things started to sort out, you know, where's technology and where are my things? And uh, it, was, it was amazing because we started to prioritize the center screen here and then minimize the cluster here. We thought uh, if you're driving, the center screen is kind of um, information overload and you have a huge cluster also. So we started to figure out with Team Menlo, our HMI group, that, uh, that the, the center screen would be uh, all the information you need. And then the cluster would be only driver oriented things. So it's, it's still a driver's car. It's a Mustang. And we wanted to really showcase that with how, uh, the size differentiation is between the two screens. Um, so as we developed that center screen, uh, team Menlo came with us with, uh, 
this um, amazing uh, new HMI interface, uh, Sync 4. So the interface is beautiful and super simple. And what's nice about having a screen that big is instead of going through uh, tons and tons of folders and menus to find what you're looking for, you can have a lot of information on one screen. So with one or two swipes, you can find anything you'd possibly need. And it, it makes for uh, much less driver distraction and it's a lot easier to use. And apart from a lot of our competition, we have one physical knob, so the volume knob. Uh, there's a lot of times I think when people are distracted with their kids in the backseat screaming or with someone walking out into the street that you have to avoid, or maybe you hear an angle and see where it's coming from. We wanted one knob that you could be driving, you could reach over, you could flick the volume all the way down and instantly uh, be a little more aware of your surroundings. So for us, it was about safety and just the convenience of, oh man, I love this song, crank it. So we've got one physical knob and we think it really um, shows that we're paying attention to the way people actually use their iPads and their digital devices. And we wanted to make a digital uh, home in the interior. And uh, I'll pass it on to Rachel and she can explain how we made it a Mustang after this. what uh, our customer wants then we had to make it a mustang so we had to make it beautiful and and sporty and had that iconic look that the mustang interiors have so the first thing we did was think about what are the mustang iconic um elements that the interior have and as as you can see the first thing you see in front of you is that sound bar that has the double brow in it and Yes, like it's highlighted in this uh, image. And also the waterfall on the door. Those are two that are the most iconic uh, design elements in, that you can find in mostly every Mustang. So we decided to incorporate it in our interior. The thing is, um, as Josh was saying in the beginning, this is not a two-door coupe. This is um, SUV and it's electric. So we wanted to have something different. And to do that, we, um, we created a lightness, an openness, and some warmth. And we did this thanks to this soundbar that is floating. And this idea of floating is um, highlighted by the uh, side to side length air vent that looks like this full soundbar is floating on it. And uh, the warmth is given by the beautiful material that BNO have developed for their sound system. And we worked along with them to uh, find the perfect um, way to showcase it. and. We tested for um, all of the car industry issues like sunlight and and, uh, and degradation, and it passed everything, and it's beautiful. It enhances the sound system. It's gorgeous, and it's very precious. Um, so this double bra not, also, not only is the icon of Mustang, but it enhanced this big screen, this 15 inch, 15.5 inch screen. Um, so we thought that that would make the perfect frame for it. Um, so um, this in this image also you can see the steel wall, uh, which evokes a, a powerful strength. And it's even if it's simplicity, it's very beautiful and elegant, but also sporty like Mustang. Um, you can see also how open this interior is. Josh was talking about how we try to release um, all the, clut the clutter on the interior by lifting things, by floating things. And so you can see the console has a very open look. You can still put stuff in beneath it. So there is an under storage. Uh, so if you want to put stuff there that you don't want to be seen when you get out of the car, you can. Um, and there is also space for this uh, for your phone. So there's a con inductive charging mat right there that you can put in, but there is also space for an extra phone for the passenger. So we're thinking about both of uh, the seating uh, in front of you. Um, another nice uh, element is that the cup holders. So usually when you drive, you you kind of always have your couples in their way, but we managed to put them a little bit lower. So when you go and activate that rotary shifter that you see there, you don't have any ever in your in your way, but they're always um, easy to access as well. And this is, was one of the key elements that we find in research. Everybody loved that. 
And going back in the console, Josh was talking about this flip-up armrest that you could put anything underneath and, and having a very nice floating element on the bottom so it gives it airiness to the interior. Once you move to the door, um, you can see that the speaker moved up and it's been integrated with, with, the, with the armrest, giving a lot of space in the bottom. You can put the 1.5 liter water bottle, you can put an umbrella, you can put a lot of stuff in it and it's very spacious. We fought a lot for this, honestly, and I'm so happy that we made it because it made the car so much better and, and so much lighter. Um, it's nice that the material uh, it's the same as the soundbar on the on the IP, so it gives a nice harmonity to it. Um, so uh, both of uh, these um, elements are uh, highlighted by ambient light, as you can see. So they are visibly um, uh, visible to to your eyes at night, and it's very beautiful how the ambient light uh, lights out the interior. Um, so this you can see the overview of uh, the same elements I talked to you about, but um, I would point out, as Josh said, the mini cluster, the 10.2 inch mini cluster that we thought that um, was very important to differentiate us by other uh, vehicles because we don't want to be distracted by the center screen, right? When you drive it, you want your own zone. You want to drive and be focused on what on, the, on driving. So we have the very basic information. So it's uh, range and and velocity, so that you are never um, bothered by the big screen when you're driving. Another cool thing about this mini cluster is that it doesn't have a brow, and and that was also a big battle because um, a lot of uh, car now still have a brow, but we managed to do that thanks to um, a, a cover that allows us not to have reflection. So it's perfectly visible in every condition. Um, we, um, if you go to um, the next um, image, um, here um, it, there's one of the most beautiful parts in the interior as well. So the seats are all new and are very comfortable, very um, beautiful and simple. And you can find them in two different colors in your interior. Uh, there's Onyx black and there is space like gray. Um, and the, it's not leather, but it feels amazing. It's just gorgeous and it, to the touch, it feels very premium and very comfortable. Um, there is, uh, for those who like uh, the sportiness, the, the GT performance, it's with the higher bolsters so that you feel more um, more sportiness and more, you know, close into the seat. And those seats have a uh, very unique Miko suede insert that is perforated and it's also depending on uh, what trim you decide. Uh, you can have three different types of seat and it, they're all gorgeous. Um, and another thing you can see by this image is the huge panel roof. This is also beautiful. It's a, a, a fixed glass sunroof and it's available for premium and up. Um, and uh, everybody's so concerned about if it gets too heated and, and so on, but it's not because it has a coat that reflects uh, infrared light, so it keeps you actually cooler in the, uh, in the summer, and you, and you also get the openness of it, the beautiful light, and it's, it's nice because it's seamless. It doesn't have any beam in the middle, and you can, uh, it opens up the whole interior. Um, you can see also the detail of the bang in Olsen, how precious and detailed it is, the chrome details all around. Like this, this interior has been studied to the millimeter. Like we wanted to provide the best quality possible for a new electric vehicle owners. Um, and we we're so excited to see how it came all together. So if you go to the next slide, um, the rear seats are one of the most liked parts in the research, strange enough, because a lot of people sat in the back and said, whoa, this is so spaceful, like it's so open, I can fit. And then a funny thing is we put two of our chief engineers who are 6'6 six, six and 6'4, six, and you can see how well they fit, like it's insane, how big and open this feels. 
even if you are six six um, head wise and length wise. And the trunk is also very big. And once the seat fold, they fold completely flat and it almost doubles uh, the amount of space you, you can use. Um, exactly here, you can see the light version of the seat, uh, the space gray, as that called. And, um, and you can see the overall look of how uh, wide and, and light and warm this whole interior feels, which is exactly what we study in the beginning and what we learned from the human-centered design study that we did. We, we learned from you, from the customers. We asked them and we tried to answer to all of your questions. And we hope that we will you will enjoy this because it's just a beautiful interior. Um, and uh, we're happy that uh, we can bring you through the journey we've been through. It had a lot of battles because it being this a new vehicle for Ford, the first electric, full electric vehicle, a Mustang that is not the two door, it has the SUV. It's been a lot of challenges, but I think that because of that, it became a beautiful interior, a beautiful exterior and an amazing car. Um, so I, I think I, I guess I, I'm happy to share uh, with you guys our process. This is our team and uh, with the GT and the premium on the left and the interior in the middle. So this is just part of the team, uh, obviously, um, but it shows how happy and relieved we were to see the product when it was done. It's just incredible. So I'm, I'm happy and I can't wait you guys to try it and drive it and enjoy it. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys. And lots of good questions have come in. So Rachel and Josh, I'm just going to rapid fire them at you if you don't mind. Um, John was asking about the differences in design between an EV and an internal combustion engine. Since, the, you know, with things like the front and the battery underneath, how did that go? How did that affect your design process as you thought through the interior of the cabin? Uh, well, um, I guess I can answer that. Um, as I was saying before, um, we were talking about how to link it to Mustang, but Mustang is a combustion engine and it's a sports car. So we wanted to create something different for the EV. EV means warm. EV means um, inspired by people living at home and trying to create a living situation for, in this case, for a family. So this, this car can seat fully five adults, but it also have this space for it. So we wanted to create the um, electric look by having it lightweight, but not having it um, create the, the strength of uh, the combustion engine, but the warmth of the electric vehicle, the silence and and how uh, peaceful that your journey should be. And a lot of it um, worked on the exterior proportion, of course, but having the trunk, which is the front trunk, uh, it's also amazing because you can have an extra space. It's fully drainable. You can use it as a cooler. You can use it as anything you want. Use it as extra space. And it gives that extra thing that the combustion engine cannot give. So it gives that extra space. It gives you that extra comfort for uh, your driving experience. And more space for the interior too. I, I think uh, you can see it in this image. There's a, a bit more legroom in the back without the tunnel. And then uh, here, and then in the console, we got a lot more space, you know, typically with a big manual shifter and a big tunnel for a big uh, transmission, uh, we don't have transmissions in this car. So we have a lot more space in this console to give back to you guys. So we have, you know, hidden storage, we've got uh, a tech tray with a uh, wireless charging. Uh, so we have a lot more room to offer storage opportunities and charging opportunities for you guys uh, that would be dedicated to transmissions and linkages uh, that would be part of the exhaust system usually runs through and, and takes up a lot of foot room. So I think the mechanical bits that are missing uh, gave us a lot more space to give back to the customer. And it's kind of a dream come true to get to uh, work without those parameters because usually we do a car and there's all these issues with all the mechanical parts we have to work around. And we had a lot less in this car. So it was a dream come true, kind of. 
All right. And uh, Mandar mentioned he actually canceled his Model Y after checking out their vaccine. So we will no comment on that. But we'll do a little. <laughs> nice. um, and he wanted to talk to us a little bit more. You, you know, Josh, you and Rachel, you showed the picture of, of Darren and the you know being six six and super comfortable back there. What kind of testing went into uh, making sure that the back seat was as comfortable as possible for for all of our passengers? The, the package was set up on an SUV platform, so we wanted to make sure that the, the headroom and the roof clearances for our, we call them Oscars, they're basically uh, mannequins or dummies, uh, not, not our directors, but mannequins. Um, we wanted to make sure they had the same amount of headroom as you would in like typically an Explorer or an Escape uh, or an Edge. And so we basically put that on top of a low slung uh hard chassis and made sure that the roof line still uh, gave us adequate room. So they actually, the exterior guys put in hundreds of hours to get this thin laminated glass. Uh, so it's, it's laminated glass. And then usually there's a lot of roof structure around it. And uh, Ron, actually the one in the, in, on the right in this image, um, worked endlessly to make sure that there was not a single millimeter of airspace so that the roof could be as high as possible and as low as possible from the exterior. So it's got a really sleek uh, side view. Uh, so, so it looks like a, a fastback coupe, but on the inside, there's cavernous space. So the engineers and the exterior guys, I mean, applause to them because they, they, they're the ones that worked out how we can get a, a roof that thin and still be structural. It's amazing. Yeah. Plus, we had uh, these people coming and sitting in it constantly to test it, and then we bring it to research and test it again. So we wanted to have space for the customer and testing people sitting in, in the back would push the engineering team to give more and more and also exterior team. So I guess a combination of the hard work of exterior and the, the testing with the customer constantly that helped us give the best that we could, um, that we could give for this uh, ex in, um, back space. All right. Um, and Janesh was wondering about storage. So from everything from sunglass holders to you talked a little bit about uh, the research you did around where to put a woman's purse. What kind of thought process went into all of the little nooks and crannies and the amazing storage availability from the, the front to sunglass holders? Uh, well, um, yeah, go ahead. Go for it. <laughs> well, it, it, as you were explaining before, uh, we did these uh, foam bucks that we could um, put um, put parts and put away and like uh, test actual behavior of people. So we would give specific elements to put in there, right? So they chose where to put it. They showed us where they wanted uh, to put stuff. And so we learned from this experience and created something especially for it. So it's about learning an experience because if we just ask, you know, oh, where do you put your phone? Like, oh, I don't know there. But if you actually give it, give parts and tell them, hey, listen, you are with your family in your car. Imagine that you're going on a road trip. Take this stuff with you and put it in the car. Show us where you're going to put it. So we actually see it live and we know exactly what they want, what they don't want. As Josh was saying, they don't want a purse down there. So we worked around it to have those uh even the most minimal space we wanted to give it to the customer right so the the low the tiny space under the console even if it's hidden and under um the charging mat we gave it to them because we thought it would help them um utilize at best the interior yeah, and we saw the same behaviors all over the world too, which is kind of the coolest part is we tested in, in China and in the UK and California and Detroit. And uh, there were a few minor changes between people wanting um, more things covered and secreted and more open for ease of use. But um, everybody had the same values of, you know, primary, secondary, tertiary storage opportunities. So we gave a spot close to you under the armrest. So, you know, your belongings, your like really, really vital belongings are right next to you. And then um, there's a little tech area in front. So all your digital devices go in one spot. So it's organized uh, below that's a hidden area. So you can, you can park uh, up with your wallet or your sunglasses or your phone underneath. And, you know, it's out of, clear sites so and no one's going to break into your car. Um, so we, we kind of did it in layers and it seemed like everybody responded to those layers uh, the same way around the world. It was pretty amazing. Yes. 
You know, and, and Ben and actually several people have been asking about, you know, minute details down to the cup holders. I have to imagine everything was designed from the ground up, right? Even even something as small as, as the cup holder? Yeah, absolutely. So typically we do, um, most companies do inline cup holders. You can see that one of these early, early sketches had them inline. And that works really well for packaging, for, for space. So that lets us put like buttons on one side towards the driver and then cups for the passenger. But it's kind of confusing. There's no uh, denotation as to it, which one is whose. Uh, people end up sticking their phones in there. So they're not really used as cup holders all the time. And it's just kind of confusing layout. But this logic here that we landed on doing side by side, you can see obviously the left is for the driver, the right is for the passenger. And then we gave a designated space for a phone got a slight angle to it there so people can can see uh, messages uh, out of the corner of their eye in case they need to access their phone. And all of this was laid out specifically so that there's more organization. Uh, you don't have to put your phone in your cup holder. Uh, it's at a lower level, so you can access your transmission and buttons um, quickly and at, a, at your fingertips, basically, if your arm's on the armrest. And then all those things you need to access are one layer below. So uh, we tried to organize it. Yeah, and also it allows us to put like the big McDonald cup fits in it. So yeah. uh, we managed to make everybody happy. So um, that was such a pain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it um, fit, and then um, being it that lower helped enormously with that. Cool. Um, a lot of talk about the the amazing big screen. Also, John wanted to know if there was ever any thought to make it movable or able to to swivel. Um, I don't know if that thought process went through your mind in your research and testing. You uh, surely, one? yeah. Oh well, it surely did. So the the screen actually, when we started, um, was actually smaller. Um, but then we went through the process of research again, and we uh, we received the input that everybody liked a bigger screen and the in center screen and then a lot bigger than what we had before so that we came up with this one. And then we thought about it, well, can we tilt it forward? Can we tilt it towards you? And um, we actually went through a lot of exercising with engineering and fought a lot to see how much it can tilt. But um, it came to the fact that if you tilt it forward, you got a lot of reflectivity from the windshield. So it would be a glare issue. And then the structure wouldn't be as tight and as uh, solid as you would want your center screen to be. So at the end, we just thought, you know what, let's just make it solid and make it beautiful and make it exactly what the customer wants without putting extra little things that it doesn't need. So it's right at your fingertips. It's right there. You don't need it to just move everywhere. It would be actually a little confusing for some people. So we decided to just keep it the way it was. Yeah, it also got in the way of of the uh, the HVAC, so air basically, cool. if you move yeah. it, you have a hard time getting the air to yourself and either heating you or cooling you. So it, it's kind of a pain because then uh, you have to worry about you know moving it back to get cooled, and it kind of runs into a lot of issues. Whereas most people in research seem to put it in the place they preferred and leaving it there. So we figured if we get the the right position with the screen close enough to you, uh, with it in your reach zone, uh, that people would just want it in one place. Cool. And a lot of folks, including Regina, are asking about, you know, the, the great wireless phone charging op, like option and, and how that comes in with the vehicle. Do you do you have any thoughts on since phones are just getting bigger and bigger these days, um, how what kind of design went into making sure that no matter what phone you have, it's going to fit comfortably on the console to charge? Yeah, actually, Darren uh, Palmer, the the six six gentleman in the back, um, spent a lot of time in China, and with our team Menlo, um, he headed up Team Menlo, and they're the ones that were basically in charge of what technology needs to make this car um, not only relevant but groundbreaking. And he is a flexible phone, which I, is amazing. And he spent a lot of time bringing phones back from China to show us the future technology for what people would be using. Is it getting smaller again? Is it flip phones? Is it getting bigger? And it seemed like we've reached peak phone. We've gotten to a point where uh, like phablets and things are, are dying off. People are storing them away. They're not using them like phones. So it seems like uh, the, the package that we did, which was a, a bit bigger than an iPhone Plus, um, packages basically any phone that you can hold in your hand. And I guess if it gets any bigger than that, 
we're all we're all in for some something interesting because I don't I don't know if it's functional anymore as a phone <laughs> if it gets bigger than that. So uh, we spent a lot of time testing with different phones from China. Cool. Um, Chuck wanted to know besides the physical knob on the screen, um, how you uh, got to where you are in terms of like directives and commands on the steering wheel and how those kind of work together. And if that was more of just, you know, a traditional Ford technology or if that was something specifically designed for the Mach-E. Well, actually, um, as Joshua was saying, the Menlo team did an amazing job renovating completely how the HMI worked. So um, all the screens are connected and they're all connected to the steering wheel as well. So it's a it's a new thing for Ford that it actually allows the um, the driver to communicate with both the um, the mini cluster and the center screen, and they did an amazing job creating this new experience. And I'm sure there will be another um, an, uh, event with the HMI team, but this is just gorgeous. And the knob was just to um, get a ground on on the um, on the customer because you usually use just the touch screen, but just we're saying, you know, you don't want to be distracted. So you want just something tact, uh, tactile to use. And uh, they decided the, uh, the portrait instead of landscape because it was more user friendly since every phone is uh, portrait as well. So it, it uh, reminds the customer of how easy it is to use and the, the proportion they are used to. Um, it's better for nav also the the, the vertical yeah. screen uh, you can see further down road so it helps with your navigation uh turns don't uh, come up uh, with like very little warning this way if it was sideways you wouldn't be able to see as far down road so that helps with navigation and then um the volume knob was one, the one thing that we got the most in research and i'm sure other oems have gotten the same thing but the single thing people hate the most about these all digital uh screens is that they want to turn the volume up or down they have to click like 10 times to get it up or down. And that's a really annoying aspect. So we just gave a typical knob. It's one motion all the way up, all the way down. And it, it's funny how much frustration that alleviates. Fantastic. Um, you know, Dominic was asking us about materials and how you chose the different materials from within the, the cabin um, while still making them look high end, but meet all of our functionality requirements, make sure they're lightweight, durable, and everything like that. What went through the process of choosing the materials for the Mach-E? Well, we worked, um, so the interior design team worked very thoroughly with the color and material design team. Um, and they worked specifically uh, to choose the best material and the best colors and the best finish for uh, the whole interior. And so we both have the same goal, right? It was the warmth and the feeling of futuristic, feeling about uh, enhancing the technology. So we wanted to give something new so not the usual animal grain not the usual leather so we wanted something more um eco-friendly or futuristic and something that that meant future and not past so we went through uh getting getting rid of the animal grains and and uh, discovering a new grain a specific new grain for uh the door for example for the door rollover or for the console and then we study a lot with VNO for the fabric that we used on the on the sound system, and we tested them for sun um, for sun damage. We tested it for um, for time damage, and it passed every single test. And it's uh, perfect for automotive use. Um, for the seats, same way. We didn't want leather whatsoever. This is an electric vehicle. There's no way we should put leather. We would. We have to put something very, very futuristic and very uh, beautiful to the touch and comfortable and to and to the eye, obviously, you know. And that's why we um, we came to this black onyx um, ActiveX material uh, that you can have in space gray as well. So mm -hmm. it, it was a hard work for um, both team to work together to get to this um, beautiful result. It looks very premium when you sit in. And that, yeah, that active X material is so buttery soft. It's like the nicest leather in the world and it's, it's synthetic. So you don't have to worry about, uh, and it's animal free. Uh, and another last thing is that we incorporated a lot of, of, of light colors, uh, for the lighter premium colorway, um, which makes the interior feel that much more spacious, um, and cleaner. It actually feels cleaner that way. Um, so between the, the massive panel roof and the light colors on the interior, 
the interior just feels really, really spacious and modern and zen. It's, it's a beautiful space to spend time. Okay. Um, we, we got a lot of questions in recently, you know, coming back to the, the front trunk. A lot of folks want to know what kind of fun everyone had in, in researching how that would be configured and putting in all the cup holders and fun stuff like that. Did you guys have a good time designing that? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we sure did. The, uh, the engineers actually came up with that and they, they decided to show it off in, in the, uh, the studio one day. We were all, we have obviously like big prototype, uh, interiors that are made of clay and foam and same with the exterior. And one day they wheeled in the front half of the car and I'm like, what the heck is this thing? And check it out, open it up. And yeah, they've got carry out and, and beverages and things, uh, hidden in there is pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. And again, it's fully drainable, so you can actually use it as a cooler. And there's no more tailgate with EV time, so you can front gate. <laughs> so it's, it's really, really fun and uh, very useful. Love that. Um, also, a lot of questions about uh, that beautiful, gorgeous panoramic roof. Uh, Arthur and Jean were talking about... You know, how that asking questions about how that might affect the feel of the interior with light coming in. How did you um, really, really go through the process of making sure it's the perfect tint, the perfect color, make sure, you know, heat and light quality are just where you want them? What, what kind of thought processes really went into making sure the panoramic roof is as perfect as it is? We basically made it as big as we could. We wanted to offer as, as much of a, a greenhouse light experience as we as we absolutely could. And if you look at this image on the right, um, th our engineering team, I mean, they, they work wonders. I mean, we, we butt heads with them a lot, but these cant rails are the smallest in, in the industry, I guarantee. And the, the screen or this uh, uh, glass is it's massive. Uh, and, and the other thing was obviously the, the heating. They don't want it to greenhouse. And there's, I think there's five layers. I, I'm not sure about, I think there's, I think there's five, maybe three. Um, but it's got infrared uh, coating so that you basically don't greenhouse the interior and get it really hot. So it, it blocks UV light um, out. So you get all the sunlight and all the warmth without um, actually overheating your, your interior. So we basically tried to give you everything we possibly could. Uh, the, we, you know, basically they squeezed every last bit of water out of that uh, that framework that they could. Yeah, and there's no damage to the material as well since the UEs are not passing through. Yeah. All right. Um, Carrie and a couple others wanted to talk about the steering wheel, the design that went into it from the size to the controls. Um, how is that different than maybe some of the traditional Fords um, previous owners might have experienced? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, for once, um, it has this um, faux leather uh, material that we use that it's um, beautiful, and even though it's not leather and it's to the touch, even more softer, even more comfortable. And that goes with the philosophy of the whole interior. And we wanted to give um, a sporty look, and that's with the um, canter uh, standard look. Um, but it's a perfect setting for the Mustang logo. And um, it has this bitone that goes in uh, along with the interior as well. And we worked a lot on how um, um, the grip would was to work and how big it was. And um, we actually, at some point, thought about having a square bottom, but it was only for performance vehicle. So we went through um, a more simplistic, but very, um, very tough uh, look to it. I love that. And I know we're, th this question is getting a little bit more into exterior, but I, I'm sure you guys have some opinions um, talking about just the door handle experience and how that different, it, different that is from, a, from opening up a traditional Ford. Yeah, that was actually really cool element. Uh, so the door works as a latch like this. So it's not the usual handle and experience. So you can see how clean the door looks without the um, carryover handle, without the, the one you're used to. It's hidden inside the pocket. And oh boy, that was a challenge to put it in there, to make it fit, to make it um, to make it uh, usable, friendly, and to make it fun. We want it to look like um, a driving experience, you know, when you're um, you're driving um, 
a video game and then you're like freaking the uh the door handle is like really really cool and it's really different so it's one of those elements that you can tell your friend hey do you know where the handle is you try and find it and, you know it's like something that you could play on and hey it's here and it's really cool and um and it's an electric uh, one, so it doesn't have to be pulled hardly. It just needs a simple touch and the door will open. And you don't have to be afraid of kids of on, um, accidentally inverted it because after two miles an hour, this thing blocks, so it will not open. And of course, there is an emergency release um, that is uh, incorporated in the handle, but it's locked for child security, so no problem with that. Yeah, it feels like the future uh, coming into the next year. You're pushing a little button to to release the door. It's it's amazing because it, it makes the car seem smarter. You push the button like you would your phone or anything else, and the door pops like three inches, and it kind of presents itself to you, and it, it kind of feels like an awakening moment. So you push that button, and the car kind of uh, opens itself to you and, and uh, awakens. And then when you open it with that little attached handle, um, it's cool because a lot of cars, when you pull on the handle, um, there's a lot of give and play in the plastic and it doesn't feel robust or really well built, but these handles are hard mounted and they are absolutely integral to the structure. So when you pull on them, the car feels so solid and so well built. And it seems like it, it was engineered with the, the greatest care. And it, it's kind of cool how much confidence it gives you when you pull on it and it feels rock solid. It's, it, it gives you a, a lot of confidence in the car. It's cool. I love it. Um, Philip wants to talk about how we, since the cabin is so light and airy you know, with the space and with the panoramic roof, how we make sure that we, uh, we keep our screens clear, bright, and visible, even with, even with glare coming in. How, what thought process went behind that? Well, for, for instance, this mini cluster has coating that prevents from having glare on it. So even we test, we do these tests all the time. Um, so we create uh, digitally and physically uh, the situation in which we have a lot of light reflecting on the screens. And thanks to this coding, this will not happen uh, with this mini cluster. And for the center screen, that's one of the main reasons why it's at this angle and it's why it's not tilted forward. It's one of the reason why it's that, that height and not higher. So it's specifically studied because of glare and reflectivity so that you will never be um, bothered by light uh, in any condition. Yeah, and, and the, 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 the uh, Menlo team did an amazing job. So they did a lot of work on how bright or how dark should the interior, uh, the, the center screen be. And they do two colorways, basically uh, daytime, which is very white and uh, not blindingly bright, but it's got a lot of light grays, which uh, help the text be uh, really, really legible from um, with, your, with your eyesight. So basically everything's really easy to read. It's very, very bright. Uh, in, in case the, the sun load sensor knows that it's really bright out. And then the dark nighttime screen is amazing because it keeps the, the, the text and font really legible with having a dark screen. So you're not getting blinded while you're driving at night. So the nice thing about what we were, we were really worried that the light screen would be a huge distraction at nighttime, basically having this, the sun, this bright sun uh, blinding you so you can't see traffic, but the dark colorway at night uh, is amazing uh, because it really fades into the background and lets you focus on what's outside the car. But you can also choose if you want mm, yeah. bright or dark. It, it's not changing only uh, depending on light. You can choose your own setting whenever mm -hmm. you like. Got it. And speaking of choosing your own settings, Rex, Rex was asking about um, the adjustability of the driver's seat and configuring your seat to be as, as comfortable as possible at all times. And what happens when, say, your friend, wife, partner gets in the car and, and they have a little bit of a different profile. How did you work through kind of that front seat, remembering your exact uh, pre preferences? So phone is key, uh, is, is kind of what helped us out. So they built in technology that knows uh, that if you're approaching with your phone in your pocket, and I think you get to like six feet away and then three feet away, it knows that you're approaching the vehicle and to unlock the door for you, uh, which is, I mean, amazing. We've, we've kind of dreamt of doing stuff like that for years, and we finally have the technology to do it. Um, but basically with that technology, it gave us the, the ability to differentiate between if you're approaching the driver door or the passenger door. So with your phone in your pocket, 
if you approach the driver door, it knows your uh, exact settings and will adjust to your settings because your phone has all your saved settings. Uh, and vice versa, if your significant other approaches the, the driver door and you're in the passenger seat, it knows to adjust to their settings because it's got their profile saved. It's really cool. It's the future. <laughs> Yeah. Plus, the this new Sync Four system learns from your actions, so it learns your um, your preferences. It learns how you drive. It learns where you go. So it go it grows up with you. So it always in development with you, and it's super futuristic if you think about it. I love it. Um, John wanted to know about the, the rotary shifter, and I know that's been introduced in, in some Ford and Lincoln products before, but why we thought that was the, the best choice for the Mach-E. Well, actually, that was uh, tested as well uh, in research, and um, people felt that it was more electric-like and more comfortable to use. Um, Especially, you put your arm on your armrest, and then you put your hand on it. It's right there, right? So, it is easy to use. It's um, right there in front of you, and it's small enough so it doesn't uh, take a lot of space. And of course, we wanted a uh, electric um, shifter to go along with the whole interior. Um, so it came it, it came exactly from from what the customer wanted. And we develop in a way that it, it it went along with the center knob of the screen, so it had some. So they talk to each other and has some um, uh, cohesiveness, and it looks great in this little pod that it's wrapped leather wrapped and it, it's enhanced in and it's just very beautiful detailed. We talked a lot about uh, customizing the uh, the experience for the drivers in the front seat, um, the passenger driver, the driver. What about um, the back seat? Besides the space, I mean, can we talk about having access to USBs back there? Talk about storage space. What went into thinking through making sure that the back seat passengers were as comfortable as possible in their rides? So we we uh, we wanted to make sure that we offered the same amount of storage, basically. So you look at the doors; they have the same floating speakers, and uh, we made the the storage bins in the doors are basically as big as we possibly could so that each person has their own storage space. And then we wanted to give a lot of space for, uh, there'd be five passengers. We wanted to make this a family Mustang. So we didn't want a console that ran all the way through and made the, the, the center, uh, person in the back, um, kind of cramped and not that comfortable. So we kept as much space, uh, away from the center as possible so they could fit three actual adults in there. And what we did is we developed the back of the console. It's kind of hard to see in this image, but there's air vents. Um, and we spent a lot of time making sure there's tons of airflow for the back of the, the back seat passengers. And then there's also uh, USBs in the back. So if you want to store your iPad in the, in the seat back or your, hold your phone with you, there's USBs there. So you have all the connectivity uh, to offer up music to the car or to charge your phone while you're scrolling through Instagram in the back seat. So I want to make sure you have connectivity in the back as well. Now uh, we're, we're, Winding in our time here, but we've got a couple of personal questions for you all about your experience with the Maki. -E, so we'll we'll end on that note. Um, the first being for both Josh and Rachel, what is your favorite interior and exterior color combinations for the Maki -E, from a personal standpoint? Well, Go for ahead, me, um, the best exterior color is the blue, or the GT, and the best interior color is the is the dark color because I. I always buy dark color interior, and um, so the GT has very beautiful copper um, highlights and amazing stitching, and um, the blue is just something gorgeous. It's just, if you see it live, it's just oh, breathtaking. Yeah, I, I think that, that interior is really, really special in the GT. Uh, all the copper accents speak so much to the electric uh, nature of the car. So I would definitely say the GT with the, the, the dark copper interior. And then I feel like the, uh, the, the, the dark gray, the space gray exterior, I think the dark gray has a lot of flake. So you can kind of see how much sculpture there is to it. And it kind of shows off um, how much form the car, the car has. It's a beautiful car. And uh, it's kind of dark, so it's kind of sinister. It's still a Mustang. So I think I like the dark gray. Me too. Um... What a uh, question for you both again. What's one small um, or fine design element that you think customers will be pleasantly surprised to discover? 
I think um, what we talked about before, the door handle, I think that's something so different uh, from what people are used to that they will be pleasantly surprised of how easy it is to use, how beautiful it is, how fun it is, and how, how they can show it off to their friends. Yeah, I think I think between that and, and the frunk being drainable, I think it's uh it's like a lifestyle thing. I think some people yeah. tailgate and some people, you know, you've got uh, you go for a hike or running, you can put your your stinky gym shoes in there or your dirty hiking boots and you can hose them off in there. So I think it's gonna be hell, you can wash your dog. We 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 actually researched it and people all over the world said, Oh, I would bring fresh fish from the market and fill it with ice. Uh and, and, and someone said they'd wash they'd wash their Pomeranian in, in the frunk because it is a drain. So I think uh the lifestyle uh, aspect of the frunk is pretty awesome yeah. because one person might wash their dog and one person might <laughs> throw a barbecue. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah it is. Um, and just a, a couple of, of multiple questions have come in recently when we started talking about the phone is key about what happens if, you know, say the, say somebody and their wife is walking up at the same time, how does the car know which one is going to be the, the driver? I think it decides once, once you separate and go to the doors, I think, I don't think it knows until you guys know. <laughs> That's probably good. Who's driving? Who's driving? <laughs> <laughs> And then I think our, our last question for, for you both is just um, what's kind of your, your final thoughts on what makes you both so proud to have been able to contribute in such a big way to the interior design of this vehicle? I mean, this is an icon, first of all, and it will be iconic because it's the first electric, full electric car that Ford comes out with, and it's a Mustang as well. So. For us to be able to be part of this, such a stone in the history of Ford is just incredible. And the amount of passion that we put into, I hope you can see in the interior. And it just showed how much we study the customer, how much we study the history of the Mustang, how much we study the EV product. So with all of this hard work that we put in, I'm, we're so glad to be part of it. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it was kind of a dream come true because most cars we have to deal with um, kind of an update of an existing car or um, you don't get a, a clean slate very often. It's a brand new chassis, a brand new powertrain. It's kind of uh, every car designer's dream come true to get to do a project that, you know, there it's it's all blue sky. It's a, a blank slate. And uh, it was kind of daunting at first also uh including blue sky with, you know, this is a Mustang still, it's the Ford crown jewel. You can't really mess it up. So it was a little daunting, uh, knowing that like, Hey, you were making an SUV Mustang, you know, this is going to be a really difficult task and you got to buckle up. <laughs> and it, it was a lot of, a lot of work, but it was, it was kind of a, a cool to get to do a dream project like this and especially how well it turned out. And, and we were able to make so many of the decisions based on the customers. Usually there's things that we know where, oh, the cup holder has to be here. This seat has to be this far away. We know cars really well. And it was amazing to get uh, the opportunity to rearrange things based on the customer and do things for you guys.